Okay, folks, we made it. The last lesson, and it's very short and has almost no content. We actually skipped over lesson 15 on online education because I wrote that six years ago, and I don't think what I wrote is quite as accurate as it should be. In fact, it's sort of disappointing. I was much more excited about that concept than, than I am now. It's not panned out. This is the second time I've worked on online education. It didn't really pan out. Uh, it was all besmired with politics, and this is a national politics. But no, I think Coursera and people are still doing well, Open edX or edX. Anyway, read, you can read that. Is a, I, this is an area I've worked on quite a lot. I, am, I think I. You know, I'd like to say that I taught the online the first Java class at several year, historically black universities in the mid 90s. And I did that with uh, online software that we built. And it was pretty difficult because you got 100 kilobits per second and very difficult to, 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 to deliver. All right. Anyway, you'll find it in the 2017 version, lesson 50. And so here we have conclusions. And this is it, the conclusion. <coughs> so we started off with the idea of big data. And then we realized how to do it with the intelligent cloud, the intelligent edge, and largely deep learning to do the AI that linked everything together. Of course, there was other things we had to manage this, manage things with files and use software to find everything and uh, Platform as a service to make it easy to implement. And as I've said many times, clouds have made it. Well, they can still change and be renamed and things, but clouds are around for a while. And um, I think you should just assume they're here. And we should use clouds. And uh, data intensive studies in industry and research is going to grow and grow in importance. Uh, not everything is optimization problem, and also everything is deep learning, sort of. Maybe there are some things will end up not being deep learning, but many of the early machine learning algorithms, support vector machines and things like that will be just completely replaced by deep learning, because it's more powerful. Because if you have small data, maybe those older machine learnings are still valuable, because deep learning almost by definition needs, needs quite a bit of data. There are lots of jobs for people, and they're in clouds and data-related activities. And even if you're not building the next AI platform, you better be digitally savvy and data savvy. And you better be flexible as these things change. Because <coughs> they're both changing and changing fast. And you can go in application companies like uh, General Electric and Walmart, and you can go to startups. You can go to the giant internet companies. Um, it was sort of amusing that um, this company in the United Kingdom, uh, Deep Mind, that Google purchased, it lost half a billion dollars. Well, it's basically a research, AI research group. So that just says that Google spent probably a billion dollars on AI research last year. That's pretty interesting. Uh, quite large, somewhat larger than research budgets in uh, NSF and universities and the traditional places where discoveries are made. So industry is going to have a much bigger impact on the world than in the past. And here's a very old slide. It's how I used to present this this class, big data in one sentence. I always had clouds. I had data analytics. I had <coughs> working in a team. We had to process big data. I like to talk about X informatics. It's still a valid concept, but not so exciting any longer. And uh, we better say data science, but I would also like to do data engineering. And uh, in fact, the better mantra now is deep learning on the cloud and deep learning on the edge. That's what we need to do. The values of X, which I actually have displayed in various uh, previous versions of these um, slides are all these ones here from astronomy through wealth and wellness. And it spans industry and science. And here we do have the final real slide. We remark that 
we are in AI or machine learning first um, world, which and all the companies in this world are actually trying to. Um, Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox, Big Data Applications Analytics course, motivation, overall view for the, for the course. This is lesson 15, and it's sort of as an aside. It's about data science education itself, and it's slightly relevant as this course has, is, is actually probably mainly taken by data science students. Um, and. Um, this discusses effectively data science in universities, although the field in many ways was generated by industry. Certainly the one we set up at Indiana University was somewhat motivated by me working with industry through the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And I was amazed by how many people said they were data scientists. That's not something I'd heard back at the university at the time. That was 2013. Anyway, there, there are some um, many articles on this. Here's probably a rather old one from New York Times, 2013. But uh, McKinley has just come out with a pretty interesting um, one here, 20, end of 2016, on with a particular focus on data analytics and why you need to know deep learning, clustering, dimension reduction, and all your various um, classification and prediction algorithms. And uh, this followed an earlier one in 2011, which actually was pretty important to Indiana in planning its uh, initiative, because it's the, it's the um, article which really uh, identifies the opportunities of jobs in this area, finding uh, um, 1.5 million uh, management uh, type jobs, which corresponds to our uh, Decision maker track and 190,000 um, technical jobs corresponding to our technical track, and uh, that were, these were jobs in the U.S. in 2018. So let's get going with a few remarks on data science education and also uh, distance education, um, MOOCs and things like that, which is an area that's always always been of interest to me, although I've never put enough time in it to be super successful. 